everybody just back with another video so i have another video here i just want to react to from pierre polyev uh he was speaking the other day i believe in northern ontario and then it's just a quick video it's a minute long and then we'll talk about it after like usual the government does not have a revenue problem they have a spending problem they nearly double government spending a decade like we've added 50 percent more bureaucrats we've increased the number of outside consultants by 100 percent we're spending $21 billion on consultants at a federal level. That's $1,400 bucks per family. But it's mind-boggling how we're spending on Wacko. It's wacko. Wackonomics. Wackonomics. That's why I want a hard cap on spending. If you don't cap spending, politicians will just add more and more and more. And These guys here, when they add a new expenditure, they go and find savings to pay for it. The government doesn't operate that way. They just add one expense on top of another expense. I want to force ministers to go into their departments. Every time they want to spend more here, they should be forced to spend less there. That's how we'll optimize the value we get for our money. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, he makes a good point, right? And I mean, this isn't really anything new. I mean, li liberals have always generally speaking, spent, you know, way more money you know, than they're supposed to. They're way more fiscally irresponsible than the conservatives, generally speaking. Um, you know, conservatives spend money in, in bad places too, you know, wars and things like that. But generally speaking, financial from a financial perspective, Canada is always in a way better spot with conservatives. Say what you want about how they might feel about social issues or whatever, but that comes secondary after people... When people are, you know, worried about losing their house, losing their car, they can't afford to buy food, social issues, climate change, all this other stuff, that comes later on. When people are homeless, when there's massive amounts of crime, people don't care about these social issues. They want to feel safe and they want to be able to afford the things that they need to buy. And they shouldn't have to work more than you know, 40, 50 hours a week to, or to have a basic life. If you're working overtime and I'm not saying don't work overtime, definitely get your overtime if you want or need it. But that being said, it's overtime or like an extra side business. That's, that's meant for you to get caught up, right? Like you're not supposed to be working overtime just so that you can pay rent and buy some food and then have to work 15 hour days just so that you can survive and never be able to do anything never be able to go on vacation, never be able to save for a house. I mean, what's people are going to get hopeless. And then when people get hopeless, they get really stressed out. They start to get depressed usually. And people are getting sick of feeling that way. This is Canada. This is supposed to be like one of the best, if not the best countries in the world. Why are people struggling so much? Well, because the government, one of the reasons is that the government is massively overspending not even spending on us most of the time. They're sending so much money overseas to many, many countries when they should be helping us, and they don't. So, I mean, so, you know, say what you say what you want about the conservatives. I'm, I'm not a conservative, to be honest with you. I've you know said that many times, but if you're new to this channel, I'm not conservative. I'm more of a libertarian. But right now, libertarians, populists, have a lot more in common with conservatives than they do liberals for these reasons, because of these the, the ridiculous spending... The fact that, again, immigration's out of control, the, the, um, the renting market, the housing market, the crime, the, the, the inflation, it's just, it's insane. Most people who don't like Trudeau think that this country is being destroyed. And it is. And some people think, well, I guess Trudeau's just incompetent. He might be incompetent. But he knows exactly what he's doing. This isn't mismanagement. This isn't, he doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what's going to happen if these policies, if he keeps tax taxing us to death and allowing immigration to be this out of control without building enough infrastructure. He knows what that happens. He knows what happens. Countries get destroyed when that happens. It's part of the reason why empires fall. And I'm not saying we are falling because we can definitely make some changes here, but we need to make them soon. I also wanted to show you guys this that I saw on Twitter. It looks like Abacus did one of those like word. Have you guys ever seen these before where it's like a wording pull where they'll ask a question like, why do Canadians have negative feelings about Trudeau? And then they'll ask the people to give their answer. And then the words that they that they hear the most show up in this graph. 
and the bigger words here, like you see immigrant, that's the immigrants. That's the word that was most used when Canadians were answering these questions. And then, you know, there's of course, you know, little, the ones that are like smaller in the background, those are the ones they heard less words like, you know, debt or Justin and things like that. But the ones that are the biggest that we can all see here, bad liar change arrogant immigrants that's the biggest one inflation economy and costs so i mean there's a lot of negative things to say about justin trudeau and his term and his policies and if you if they did a poll and they, and they said like well you know uh, what good things do you like about Trudeau? there wouldn't be many words here that are positive some people would say, well, you know, I like him and, you know, he's, I don't know what compliments you could even give the guy at this point. I mean, he's, there's nothing really good to say. Well, he's a good speaker. Okay. What about his policies? Uh, don't really like too much about that. But when you see that, if you're Justin Trudeau and you, you see this, which I'm sure he's heard about it at least, that's got to make you think, man, Canadians are really waking up here at least in terms of turning on the Liberal Party, they're going to go conservative. And again, we will see what the conservatives do here because it's important that if when they win the next election that they make major changes. I know it can't happen overnight, but it and within Pierre Polyev's first two years, you need to see a lot of changes, positive changes. He can't erase all of what Trudeau's done, but he can certainly stop the bleeding. He can axe the taxes. He can do all. He can do a lot of things fairly quickly. Building houses, for example, is going to take a little bit longer, of course, right? Because it takes a while to build houses. But that being said, you know he's going to be on the hot seat pretty quickly if he does not follow through with what he says. You got to give him, a, you know, a year or two. But he's he's got to start doing things properly right away. We don't have time here, and hopefully. Most people who are listening to this agree with me and that, yes, we're going to be happy that Trudeau is gone, but we immediately then have to shift our focus over to making sure that we hold Pierre Polyev accountable. That's very, very, very important. If he doesn't keep his word, if he, you know, he's, he just ends up being like a WEF globalist like Trudeau is, and he doesn't cut the taxes and he doesn't build the homes, but he does cut our rebates. And then it's like, well, that, now we're going to be even worse off. Then where do we go? We don't have anywhere to go. Hopefully then people would start shifting over to the PPC, but Maxim Bernier is so unpopular. He's got to either get his shit together or he's got to get out of the way and let someone get in there who can at least win a seat, at least do something positive. Because if Pierre Polyev screws us, what are you going to, going to go over to the Green Party? Elizabeth May? Yeah, if you don't know who she is, just have a look and you can see her drunken outbursts in public. Who wants to vote in a, a person like that? She's not even a good leader. She can't get anywhere. She's stuck in the mud too, right? At least she has a seat in parliament, but I mean, she, the Green Party? Come on. She Elizabeth May literally said that she's this the grumpy 70-year-old version of Greta Thunberg. So need I say more? Right? Like, we got nowhere to go. So if Pierre Polyev does screw up, we need, to, as Canadians, to form together and build or at least rebuild the populist party of Canada, because that's going to be our only option next. And if Maxim Bernier can't step up or he can't win in his next by-election, we're going to be in big trouble potentially, but maybe again, maybe I'm being naive here, but maybe Pierre Polyev ends up being a decent prime minister. We certainly need it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, what do you think about Pierre Polyev's message? What do you think about holding him accountable I think it's very important. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section. I always enjoy reading uh, what you guys have to say. Uh, thanks again so much for watching, guys. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. And I'll be back shortly with another video.